A lot of times while creating reports and dashboards in Power BI, you're gonna come across weird blanks in your visualizations, be it a matrix or a chart visual, and it looks something like this. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what are these blanks, why do they appear, and how do you fix them? Let's go. All right, let's just start with the first question that why do blank most often appear in charts or visualizations in Power BI? Blanks typically appear because of something called as referential integrity. What does it mean? It simply means that your fact table contains a few values which are missing in your master tables or dimension tables. Well, if you did not understand, that's all right. Let me help you understand. So take a look at this chart. This chart has got a couple of bands right here and we have a blank uh, value right here and we'd like to investigate that why is this so? Now, if I just go ahead and take a look at the relationship, you're gonna see that we have three dimension tables. We have the products table, calendar table, and the master table, the customer master, and we have our fact table, which is right here. Now, this simply means that there are going to be a few products which are right here as a product ID, which are missing in your master or your dimension table for the products. Now, how do we check certain values in case there are values on the many side of the relationship, which are missing on the one side of the relationship. How do we really check that? As a very simple check, what you can do is write a very simple VLOOKUP function in Power BI. Let me show you how. So you're gonna go off to the sales table and I'm just gonna click right here, go off to the sales table. In the sales table, I'm gonna create a column and start writing my VLOOKUP. Now VLOOKUP in Power BI is synonymous to the related function and I'll teach you how do you write that. Now the first thing that you have to keep in mind is that there is a one-to-many relationship between the two tables. This is on the one side, this is on the many side. The second thing that you have to keep in mind is that the column or the VLOOKUP that we're trying to create should be on the many side of the relationship. It should not be on the one side of the relationship. Now, let's just go over to the sales table, which is on the many side. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna make a new column. And in this column, I'm gonna maybe go ahead and start to write, let's say missing products. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and say something like related. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, I wanna have the product code being looked up right here. So the related function only accepts one single input, which is the column reference, and that's what I have done. Go to the products table, fetch the product code right here. Simply means that please get this very code right here. In case the product is missing, you are going to get a null value. So if I actually go ahead and commit on this and press enter, you're gonna see that we definitely get blanks. And these are the blanks which are the products which are missing. So I can just go right here, pick up only the blanks, click on okay. And these are all the blanks which are missing from the products table. If you're enjoying the video thus far, you're absolutely going to love my courses on Power BI, especially DAX, data modeling, M language, and Power Query, the hard and the fundamental parts of Power BI, which is where I talk about the logic first, then take you gradually to the next more complicated levels, try to explain you how the logic is framed and how do you have to come up with a solution. There are hundreds and thousands of students who have joined my courses and they have left raving feedback about the quality of the instruction. In case you're interested to take your skills to the next level, I'd recommend that you do not hesitate to join the course. I'll see you inside. Now, writing the VLOOKUP is definitely one option for you to take a look at what product or what items are missing from your master tables or dimension tables, but I would not recommend this particular method because this involves creating a column, which is not really a good practice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at another method through which we're gonna create a table to report all the values in all the dimension tables which are missing. Let's just take a look at our data model once again. So at the moment, I have built in a few missing products in the sales table, which is right here. And I have also built in a few customers which are missing again in the customer ID of the sales table. That means a few products are missing here and a few customers are missing here. And we would like to have a single table to report both of these missing values, be it the products table or be it the customers table. How do we do that? In order for me to take a look at all the missing products, I'm gonna build a table. So I'm gonna go over to the table tools and create a new table. And the logic of this particular table is something like this. Take a look at the product column of the sales table and take a look at the product column of the products table and compare the two. In case anything is missing, please report that. Now, how do we do that? Let's just take a look. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the accept function. So accept, and if you take a look at the accept function, it simply says that it returns you the rows of the left side table, which do not appear on the right hand side of the table. So I'm gonna go ahead and say something like, hey, I'm trying to make a table 
and the table is going to have unique items only. So in the sales table, I'm going to make a unique item table of the product ID column. So the values function actually creates a table with unique values. That's what it does. And this is the left side of table and the right side of the table is going to be again the unique table of the products table and the product ID column. So which is nothing but right here. And these are my two tables. Now I would want these two tables to be compared and in case anything is missing, I would want that to be reported. I press enter and you can see that I now get all the names of the product IDs which are there in the sales table but are missing in the products table and those were the product IDs that were causing you that blank value. To make this table more interesting and more intuitive, let's just also add one more column to this particular table. So I'm going to go ahead and say something like add columns and I'm going to create that these uh, values which are missing are coming from the products table. So I'm going to go ahead and say something like, hey, the column that I'm trying to add to this table is nothing but the table name. And the table name is going to be, let's say, nothing but the products. Close the bracket, press enter. And this is nothing but the products table. Similarly, what we can do is we can also create a very similar DAX calculation to find out all the missing values in the customer master or the customer dimension table as well. So let's just go ahead and call this as my product table. So prod table, and that is my first variable. And now I'm going to go ahead and copy this very DAX across the second time here. And I'm going to call this as nothing but my second table or my customers table. Call this as cust table. And now I'm going to say, hey, I'm looking forward to create this one columnar table for not the sales product ID column, but the sales customer ID column. And here, this is going to be not the products product code, but the customer and the customer ID right here. Now it's going to tell me that, hey, which items are missing in the customer uh, master table and the name of that particular uh, column that we're going to create is going to be nothing but customers table. All right, press enter. And now what we're going to do is we're going to obviously join these two tables. So I have declared the two variables right here, but I've not joined the table. So I'm going to go ahead and say something like return. And I'm going to combine these two tables and the function to do that is nothing but union table one, which is nothing but my products table and table number two, which is nothing but my customer table. I will combine those two tables, press enter, and that is nothing but my output. So the first column is nothing but the ID. You can obviously change the name. I can double click and call this as an ID column. These are all the IDs which are missing in the products table. And these are all the IDs which are missing in the customers table, which should be corrected. Now, if this table is empty, Everything is good. There should not be any blanks. And that's the measure that I'm going to create the next. As a last check that you can add to your visualizations or models is nothing but referral integrity check. That means that the table that we have created, which is nothing but this particular table, if it's showing any number of rows, that means you have the referential integrity broken and the values are missing in the master or the dimension tables and that needs to be fixed. Well, how do you write that check? Let's just take a look. So I'm going to go to the visual right here and start creating a measure. So I can just click right here and say that I want to make a new measure and let's just call this measure as ref check. So I'm going to start with an if and I'm going to say is the table empty or not? So is empty is the function that I'm going to use is empty asks for a table and sure enough, we have a table and the name of the table is nothing but a table. And if this particular table is empty, then then I would like to give it a green sign, which is going to be, let's say my green dot, uh, which is pretty cool. And then otherwise I'm going to maybe create a red dot. And the way that I do that is that I put that quotation mark right here and use the windows dot key to open up all the emojis right here and just type red. And then I just pick up that red dot and then I'm going to close the bracket right here. Now I'm going to drag this measure in my visualization and convert that into a card visual. And of course, just make it a bit smaller. Nice. Now that you've seen that this dot is nothing but red, you obviously understand that the referential integrity check is broken and there are a few values missing and you should go to your table, take a look at those values and try to fix those values if you want the blanks to be fixed in your visualizations. Now this dot is obviously going to turn green in case the values are not missing. So let's just take a look at one more time. So I'm going to go ahead in my table right here and I'm going to create one more table, which is going to be a test between our sales table right here and our calendar table. Now, obviously, 
any dates which are there in the sales table, which is in this particular column, are obviously there in the calendar table and there are no dates missing. Therefore, our referential integrity check is going to turn green. But let's just take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and start to make a table. So I'm just going to go to the Home tab, make a new table. In the new table, I'm going to write the same measure. I can just zoom in the size a bit and I can just paste that very calculation. All that I'm saying is that, hey, why don't you create a unique of the sales table, not product ID, but the date column. So I can just write date here. And I can say, hey, why don't you create the unique between the values of the calendar table and the date column? That's all that I have. In case there are any missing values, please list them out. And this is going to be nothing but my calendar table. Now I know that this is not going to give me any number of rows because there are none of the values which are there in the sales table which are missing from the calendar table. Nevertheless, we get a table. Let's just go take a look at the table. So I'm just going to go to the table view and take a look at table two right here. And the table two is absolutely blank. Now, in case you were to reference that particular measure, which is right here and reference that measure on nothing but our table number two. So at the moment, if I just write table number two, you're going to see that this uh, dot turns green and now there is no referential integrity check missing. So you can build these check to kind of take a look at that in case any values are missing, things need to be sorted in the model. These can be good indicators if the model health is doing okay or not.